Hello world, this is my RC remote control electric mower uh, using an existing Ryobi push mower I had uh, for a few years already. And I also used some electric wheelchair wheels and motors. Uh, this cost me less than $450. This is how I put everything together. Uh, you can see an assortment of uh, metals. You got your angle iron, square tubing, and flat bar to mount the actual motors. These are wheelchair motors and wheels. You can see I painted everything green. Uh, everything is in the description if you are unfamiliar with these parts. Uh, you'll see five inch caster wheels. Everything is welded. Um, some parts are uh, bolted together, but the majority of the frame is welded together uh, for uh, ultimate durability. Um, you can see right here, I bolted uh, this square tubing, this metal tubing to connect to the axles of where the wheels were. Uh, this makes uh, the mower adjustable, so you can adjust the mower to your uh, liking, however uh, low you want to cut the grass. Uh, so that is how I did that. And then you see our, uh, our flat bar uh, to serve as a uh, motor mount. Zip ties to hold the motors in place, because these are heavy motors. Uh, the metal will bend if I didn't have those zip ties. Uh, zip ties over the batteries that are wired in series as you can see um, everything has a uh, wire connector wire nut connector um, jae connector to uh, charge your batteries so you don't have to take them out and of course that's our uh, battery for the mower and then we got our uh, battery switch and then look at that toggle switch <laughs> toggle switch for uh, the operation of the mower. And I'm going to show you a little wiring diagram I drew uh, in a bit just so it's uh, easier to uh, understand how I wired this thing. Uh, again, uh, nut connectors is how I wired everything. Nothing really fancy. The motor driver and uh, 100 amp fuse all connected together. So let me just first show you how I wired this uh, thing uh, with the mower toggle switch. Uh, you'll have uh, the handle, which the mower has. Uh, there's going to be a wire. So if you cut that wire and um, strip it, you're going to get three wires. One is either brown or, or black, I think. If it's black or brown, that's going to be your ground. Uh, so the, the middle, uh, one end of the, uh, the actual switch, you'll want to solder that into that, just how I have it shown. And then the other two wires, I forgot what color they were, but that's going to be your throttle switch. In your start button switch, you just want to uh, twist them and solder them onto the same uh, terminal uh, next next to it. They should be two uh, silver color terminals. Um, the other one, if you have your toggle switch, if you have a third one, uh, you don't want to use that one, uh, especially if it's like a gold color. Uh, that's for something else, so you just want to ignore that. Then you got your 24 volt motors. Uh, you want to get 0 volts and your 24 volts and wire them directly to the motor driver. You want to follow your motor driver's instructions. Uh, but for this, uh, we pretty much have motor 1A and we have motor 1B terminal. And I had the 0 volts go into the motor 1B terminal and the 24 volts uh, go into the motor 1A terminal. And uh, the things you see, the little square things I drew in between the wires, uh, please ignore that. That's just a uh, connector because my wiring was too short and I had to extend it. You want to do the same thing for the other motors as well, as you can see on the other side, except you can see motor 2A and motor 2B, exactly how I did it before. Now you'll see our two 12-volt batteries wired in a series to make 24 volts. Now, if you follow the zero volt side of the battery, uh, you'll follow the wiring very closely, and then you'll run into a little, uh, that little blue dot that I have here. Uh, those are the, uh, the screw connectors, uh, wire connectors that I have, and you'll see that there's three different wires coming out of it. One, of course, coming from the battery, one going into the end of our fans. Now, these fans are 12 volt fans, so I have them wired in a series, just like uh, we have the batteries here. So we have the negative end of the fan, that's what you see there, that's going into the connector as well. And then you have another wire that's coming from the connector to connect it to um, where you need to put it into your motor driver. 
And then we have our uh, positive end of the battery, the 24 volts, and that goes to the battery switch. And then you turn on the switch, of course, and then uh, electricity flows through. Uh, you'll see this other wire connector, uh, same exact scenario what we had um, coming from our zero volts, except from here, we had the positive end of the fans, which we wired in a series. And then we also have a 100 amp fuse. The 100 amp fuse uh, goes into that wire connector as well. And then, of course, coming from the other end of the fuse um, is going right to the motor driver. Now, you really want to be careful before connecting this thing and powering it on. Uh, make sure all the wiring is connected. Uh, you do not want to short the half, and you really don't want to damage the motor driver at all. Um, <laughs> so you want to be careful while doing this stuff. And then, of course, on the other end of the motor driver, you have uh, four terminals, uh, two, uh, one for channel one and uh, the second for channel two. And, of course, you want to wire channel one and channel two from your receiver to the driver's terminals. Uh, pretty uh, self-explanatory, but you also might need to uh, refer to your transmitter and receiver's instructions as well on proper connections. And then, of course, you want to take your positive wire, the, uh, the, the five volt, uh, wire. Um, there is a step down regulator on uh, on this on this driver, uh, but if you don't, you might need a step down converter. Um, but for this one, you're sending five volts to the uh, the receiver, and then you have your ground to the receiver as well. Now, if you have a motor driver that does not have RC built into it, uh, you can connect it to a microcontroller like an Arduino and kind of get more into customization with that. Um, maybe I'll make a video about that in the future, um, but it would be a lot more uh, cheaper solution if you go that route. So uh, again, I did use uh, fork terminals to keep everything safe uh, to prevent um, any shorts or any wires from touching. And then you see our two 80 millimeter fans. I use a hole saw for this one and I just drilled them in a uh, three inch hole saw, I believe, uh, or three and a half inch, so everything worked perfectly. And then here's just a look of everything again, just how everything looks really nicely. Um, remember, I did connect it to the axles of the mower, so I can lower it, and it's nice and sturdy. It works like a charm. So this is just the operation before I take this thing out. You'll see right here, you wanna make sure everything is center. Turn on the battery switch. I'll go a tiny bit and you can see the wheels are going forward. Tiny bit, wheels going backwards. Left, reverses the wheels in opposite directions which makes the wheels turn left and right. I'll show you the fans, uh, look at the fans uh, running, keeping everything cool, but I did not show you that one of them is reversed. Uh, that's why uh, one fan is pulling air in and one fan is pushing air out. You might want to uh, rewind it and uh, take a screenshot or something uh, to see exactly how I have the fans. Uh, but that's how um, I have good airflow running so everything is cool. And here's just how everything moves around when I take the, uh, the mower out of the garage. Nice and slow, nice and steady. Do some burnouts, have a little bit of fun. <laughs> we are going to do some yard work. Life a lot easier. And right here you'll see what my mower looks like now, I had some issues with the motors bending uh, the flat bar, uh, making the wheels crooked. Uh, so what I did to fix this was I uh, drilled in a little bit of uh, a hole to keep the zip ties in place, and I have a threaded rod here uh, to serve as a brace uh, to keep everything together. And so far, no problems. I also have new um, wheels, um, inflatable wheels, instead of solid tire. And that also helps me go up the slope as well without getting stuck. So, so far, no problem. But thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. But again, please check the description. 
uh, for everything in detail as well. And until the next one, peace.